Hello and welcome to the third part of the series about CNC machine Ultimate B. This time around I will talk about topics that apply to almost any CNC machine, not just the Ultimate B. It took me quite some time to figure out how to lay the topics of this video, so I figured out I should start with the choice of electronics, because this will determine what firmware you can use and wiring is going to be dependent on that as well. To make this topic slightly less confusing, let's divide it into three categories. First will be just a breakout board. Let's call this a minimal setup. Second one will be all-in-one solution that consists of all the electronics inside the box. And a third option will be DAY. Yes, I know that technically CNC controllers are divided into two categories, which is the direct control and motion control systems. However, this doesn't mean much for me as an end customer, as there are some motion control systems that are really cheap and the direct control systems that are really expensive. In the end, I don't really care what is driving the stepper motors. I'm much more interested in price, support, availability and choice of programs to operate it. And the reason why this was a difficult topic to talk about is because there are hundreds, if not thousands, options available out there. When I was first researching what kind of firmware and electronics I should use for my machine, it took me literal few days to even scratch the surface. Just a quick note. Regardless of the option you will choose, most of the solution I will list down below require external power supply. So just keep that in mind. Let's start with the first option. Minimal setup that is also a direct control. You can find the breakout boards that have LPT and USB connectors for as low as 3 bucks. This is truly the cheapest option out there. However, it requires additional components such as power supply, stepper motor drivers and a PC. The reason why it's listed as minimal setup and not DIY is because stepper motors are directly controlled by your PC. It is compatible with Mach and Linux CNC. This is probably the most versatile setup as you don't necessarily need a full-blown PC to operate it. If you aren't confused yet, you can connect this board to Raspberry Pi with an additional LPT shield. I absolutely do not recommend this option to beginners or people that aren't good with Linux. And while I am fine with Linux, I abandoned this idea pretty early on after seeing how many problems people had with this setup. I'm not saying this cannot be done. I'm just saying that I don't want to deal with issues regarding the software if I can have the option that is almost the same price and doesn't have that many issues. This is probably the best option for intermediate users and people that want to have an additional display to control your CNC. I will be having a laptop nearby so I don't really care about additional display. Alternative is paid Mach software that costs around $175 for Mach 3 or $200 if you want the newer version Mach 4. Of course, this isn't the only board available for this setup. I have seen at least 5 different ones. Second option is all-in-one control boards that have integrated stepper motor drivers. This time around, there's even more products to choose from. You will be looking at around $200 up to even $1000 to spend if you want a standalone controller. One of the most popular ones are Spark Concept CNC X Pro, Black Box from the Open Builds, and the Buildbotics CNC controller. I briefly checked the other products, but honestly, they weren't as popular as those three. Despite the price, they're actually pretty affordable if you consider that for minimal setup and the DIY you will also need to buy stepper motor drivers and those can be pretty expensive. Printer motherboards also falls into this category. Yes, you can run a CNC on 3D printer motherboards. However, you will need to consider that CNC usually requires higher power stepper motors. But it's absolutely possible. 
One thing to note is that not every 3D printer board is compatible with CNC firmwares. But because some of the firmwares such as Clipper, Marlin and RepRap can be compiled for CNC mode, you can use them as a substitute. Third option is DIY. This is truly a mix and match of anything you can find that can drive a stepper motors. And this is an option I have personally chosen. Simplest solution is just an Arduino with CNC shield. The problem with this is that step stick drivers are usually fairly weak. So my recommendation would be to use just an Arduino and the dedicated stepper motor drivers. Of course, Arduino isn't the only option available. I am using STM32 Blue Pill simply because I had one lying around. If you check the different firmwares available for CNC, you will find that there are a lot of microcontrollers compatible with them. There are even quite a lot of breakout boards dedicated for this use case. You don't have to use the breakout board in this setup. I don't have any, so I simply connected microcontroller pins to a stepper motor drivers. I could recommend DIY setup for people that have quite a bit of electronics lying around. Maybe they can use something they already have instead of purchasing new stuff. This also requires a bit of electrical knowledge and I wouldn't recommend it to beginners. Depending on the microcontroller you choose, you will have a different firmware option. I'm not entirely sure about Mach and Linux CNC compatibility with motion control systems, so don't quote me on this one. But usually DIY systems are made for motion control systems. In other words, your PC does not directly control stepper motor drivers. Instead, board will interpret the G-code and drive the motors for you. If you have a 3D printer, this concept should be pretty familiar. One of the most popular firmware is GRBL. Once upon a time, it was pretty much the only option available for hobbyists. But a lot has changed since then. Right now there are like trillions of forks and even different firmwares compatible with GRBL, such as GRBL HAL and MicroCNC, which I'm using right now. The problem with original GRBL was that it wasn't made to accommodate different microcontrollers and only work for the Atmel ones. It lacked a hardware abstraction layer, so different people have been upgrading it. But they couldn't agree on a standard way to proceed, and this is why we have so many different ones, like this XKCD meme. Which one I would recommend? Well. It depends what board you have on hand. If you don't have any, probably stick to GRBL HAL and pick something that has full support for it. And while the GRBL isn't the only option available here, it is by far the most popular in this category. That brings us to a next topic, stepper drivers. I can tell you from my experience that analog stepper drivers are very loud. Some people say that it doesn't matter, but for me, this was really annoying and a loud sound, and I couldn't sit next to it for more than a couple of minutes. I replaced all of my analog stepper drivers with digital ones with the DM prefix. I do not regret this decision, for me it was a money well spent. They are capable of delivering up to 5 amps, which should be plenty for most stepper motors. You can get some from the stepper online for around $25 each. So you will be looking at around $100 for all four. Some people say that they are prone to breaking, but I haven't used them enough to tell. When it comes to drivers, in all-in-one solution I have honestly no idea. If they are in step stick format, most likely you won't be able to use bigger stepper motors. So this is something worth checking before you buy. Once you have the motion system figured out, it's time to start thinking about the spindle. My recommendation would be 1.5 kW water-cooled spindle from China. This has been one of the best value for the money that you can buy on the market for a long time. 
especially that it has been usually bundled with a VFD. I cannot say much about lasers, but I can say that rotors that are meant for woodworking or motors that has been disguised as a spindle are usually not the best choice. It may be tempting to go for that option, but I wouldn't recommend it if you are planning to mill any kind of metals. These should be enough for engraving though. However, a water-cooled spindle alongside with variable frequency drive costs around $200 and this is a really hard to beat price. Also, a water-cooled spindle is a lot more quiet than the air-cooled one. Downside is that you will have to use some kind of water cooling loop. But it's not going to be hard to make, as you can use a PC water cooling for this, or even a simple bucket with a water pump. When it comes to wiring, I can only show you how I did it on my machine, but the electrical side should be pretty much same as the other. Bare minimum is wiring stepper motors. This will be true for any CNC controller you choose. Each stepper motor driver needs to be connected to your motherboard with four cables. Common ground, direction, step and enable pin. Every stepper motor needs to be connected to a stepper motor driver with yet another four wires. A minus, A plus, B minus, B plus. While they are usually labeled on the side of the stepper motor drivers, you will have to take a look at the documentation of your motors to know which one is which. You don't really need to connect VFD to your motherboard, you can manually control it. However, some firmwares and all in one solutions have RS484 connection that can be connected to variable frequency drive in order to control the spindle speed and direction. You can also utilize PWM signal from microcontroller to change the speed of your spindle. The catch is that you will have to use some kind of converter that will translate PWM signal into analog 0 to 10 volts. Spindle is usually connected to VFD by three wires and it doesn't really matter which one is which. Except that if you will see that your spindle is spinning in the wrong direction, you'll have to exchange any of the two wires. Be aware that the spindle has four wires and one of them is ground. You can check it with multimeter as it will have no connection to any other cable. Last step in wiring process is the safety features. I would recommend at least getting some fuse and two buttons. One for emergency stop that is normally on but when you push it it becomes an open loop. And another one for cycle start which works similarly to emergency stop except it will not allow the machine to start until it's connected. There's also a third button for feed and hold that will gently stop the machine as opposed to emergency stop. One thing I would like to mention in case of safety is that usually firmware does have the buttons connected to the microcontroller and it will not help in case of microcontroller malfunctions. So if you want to have a better emergency stop, you will need to figure out a way to cut the power immediately after using the button, most likely by using some relay. You can also connect some end stop switches, but for CNC those aren't really needed as you will most likely be zeroing it to the stock you will be milling. However, it's a nice feature to have as some firmwares are capable of auto squaring the gantry if you connect the two Y end stops, one for each side. And this is it for today's video. It was long enough and probably very boring. In the next one I will talk about compiling firmware setting it up and doing some test runs. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it.